probably the number one offender of antibiotics, right? You take an antibiotic and it wipes out your gut flora. It uh, kills bacteria, whether it's in the blood or in your gut, even the healthy bacteria, the stuff that you want in there that helps keep your gut healthy. But what about some of the less obvious things? What about things like um, chemicals and poisons and other drugs, not necessarily antibiotics, maybe chemotherapy um, or mood altering drugs or the kind of things that people are taking every day, pain relievers, you know, chemistry that you put into your gut, possibly throwing off the gut flora and uh, you know, maybe these little bacteria are overdosing on these chemicals and dying off. What about the foods that you eat that are full of pesticides, including insecticides, herbicides, and fungicides that are in your food, even bred into your food through like, you know, genetically modifications, you know, like corn producing its own insecticides now, so that when you consume this, you're consuming something that came, comes out of the corn that's ready to kill bugs and pests and things of that nature that ought not be in there. I think they do it by a bacteria that produces a natural insecticide chemicals. Oh, they also breed these vegetations now to be resistant to chemicals that kill weeds and stuff like that. So they can, you know, because it's bred into the corn, they can, uh, you know, literally crop dust the fields with all kinds of chemicals to kill off all the weeds. And it, of course, it ends up nice and thick on the corn that you consume. Um, but there's no weeds around because they couldn't possibly live in that environment and then we eat these things it goes in our gut and I guarantee you it is killing off your gut flora corn being the number one offender also a very inflammatory uh, food filled up with chemicals and it's in literally everything in the grocery store corn syrup modified corn syrup high fructose corn syrup corn starch it's everywhere what about other nutritionally altered foods like trans fats and hydrogenated oils things that are not natural that you put into your body. You know, these things will preserve foods and prevent things from growing in them and you put them in your stomach and expect your healthy gut flora to flourish. It's not gonna happen. What about um, chemicals in the water like chlorine? Maybe not such a big problem now, but you know, years ago, uh, we drank water from the tap and uh, you know, a bottled water made its appearance, what, like late 70s, early 80s? or so, but up until then you just drank water from the tap. And it's possibly possible that we messed up our gut flora all the way back then. What about, you know, mercury in your teeth? Um, killing things off. Possibly uh, the fact that we're eating dead foods to begin with, things that have been overcooked and pasteurized and even radiated. You know, most of the things in the grocery store are, you know, if it's a juice especially, it's gonna be pasteurized. Well. Pasteurization kills bacteria, including the friendly bacteria, the things that are healthy for your gut flora. And radiation, of course, does the same. These things did not exist just 100 years ago. You know, it's interesting. I think it's in the uh, book of Timothy. It says, use a little wine that it would be good for your stomach and your frequent infirmities. Use a little wine. Now, uh, Christians will use that to justify, you know, getting intoxicated. But the reality is, use a little wine because it'd be good for your stomach. You know, I purchased a, a bottle of raw grape juice one time. It had not been pasteurized, did not have preservatives in it, and I put it in my refrigerator. And about a week later, I went back to it and I opened it up and it made that little sound like a you know, little pssst. When I opened it, I almost had a nice little fizzy ferment about it. It started fermenting naturally, kind of turning into like a wine, probably a wine that would, um, would have been made maybe, you know, a thousand years ago. Well, use a little wine that would be good for your stomach. I believe what that meant was this slightly fermented fruit beverage was loaded with probiotics. And the probiotics are good for your stomach, for your gut, for your intestines. And probiotics are good for your immune system. So use a little wine that would be good for your uh, stomach and your frequent infirmities. Kind of makes sense. You know, Back then, when there was no refrigeration, you actually cultured the foods, juices and, and vegetation. You know, sauerkraut is a cultured vegetable, but chances are if you buy sauerkraut in the store, it's probably been cultured and then it's probably been preserved. And those preservatives, when you consume them, they're going to not only prevent the bacteria and the sauerkraut from flourishing, but probably also in your gut.